it's it's easier to to talk about populations on specific watersheds and specific river systems than it is to be speaking about why populations aren't maybe doing so well in the ocean. The ocean is a great big black hole. Um, the si river systems like the Seymour, you can know every inch of the system. You can monitor it, you can walk it, you can count fish. You can't do that in the ocean. When the dam went in, it literally eliminated more than half of the usable habitat on this system. When that happened, the, the salmon populations and the steelhead populations literally crashed. Our main goal is trying to rebuild salmon and steelhead stocks on this on this river to self-sustaining levels. We we're nowhere near a self-sustaining level right now. We were slowly having success until the rock slide. Uh, so we it, we're desperately trying to get the, that rock slide dealt with so we can get back back to normal and get back to fish spawning naturally pink salmon we were successful for the very first time the year before the slide with pink salmon making it all the way up to the dam here uh, we estimated probably more than a thousand adults who are above the Seymour Canyon and that's a first and then for them then along came the rock slide <laughs> so we haven't seen any pink salmon we haven't seen any pink salmon coho or steelhead above the rock slides and then that happened in 2014. So in the 1950s, uh, the Vancouver Water District built the Cleveland Dam um, so that they could supply water to the Vancouver region. Uh, for a couple years after that, they built the fish ladder so that the fish could swim up. They would get trapped in a basin and at that point in time, they would just truck them around and into the watershed because above there, there's about 75% of the river's natural spawning grounds are up there, so they would do that, but there was no way for the out-migrating smolts to make it over the dam without just going over the 300-foot drop. There used to be, on average, about 7,500 coho returning to the Capilano, and about 2,000 steelhead. After they built the dam, they dropped down to about 2,000 coho only returning, and about 200 steelhead. So they decided that in the 1970s they needed to build Capilano Salmon Hatchery. We currently produce about 475 coho smolts. We produce about 560,000 Chinook. They are not indigenous to this river. They were introduced for fishing purposes. Um, Industry has always been cyclical to a point. But um, I would say uh, since the early 90s, um, the, uh, the ups and downs have been a lot worse and there's been more downs than ups. Well, it impacts my, uh, my livelihood. I've probably um, uh, lived probably at least half of those years uh, around the poverty line. The wild salmon now are, are being attacked by at least four known pathogens plus sea lice and the federal fisheries and the province of BC are doing nothing about it fish I've seen come out of this river, um, in the, especially in the latter part of the season, there's a huge number of diseased fish. Um, the point is that we have less access to fish now because our runs are depleted. You know, there's, uh, you know, this coming year, or this probably the second year in a row, we won't be able to fish Fraser River sockeye because there won't be enough of them to fish. The other thing that's, that um, I've really noticed is um, uh, I believe that climate change is, is affecting us. The real, um, the real answer is to, uh, is to uh, reclaim all the, the lost wild habitat, and that's another issue that still faces us. You know, um, many of our uh, watersheds in BC were uh, destroyed or seriously damaged by uh, industrial logging, for example, and a lot of that has never been cleaned up properly.